Duly noted, 3-11-2018. Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Dooley. I'm here at the amazing Livestrong Primal Fitness in KT Level 2 with my amazing colleague and one of the teaching team members, Melvin. Melvin, tell a little bit about yourself. Um, physio, doing NKT Level 2 this weekend, learning too much at the moment. <laughs> Not brain dead yet. You still have some left, yes? Uh, a little bit, hopefully. Okay. Uh, Melvin was really forthright and amazing at being able to let me break it down for uh, low back. And you have... Um, S some low back discomfort, yep. yes, and hinging patterns that are a little uncomfortable. Yeah. And I wanted to differentiate how um, like the muscle testing between multifidus and uh, erectors. So the multifidus and lumbar erectors are considered to be this intrinsic uh, core control that helps us with maintenance of healthy lordosis. And I noticed with Melvin, he doesn't have quite healthy lordosis. A lot of hip tightness, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, lot. lots of anterior pelvic tilting. Yeah. And um, when you hinge, you go into back extension yep. in that one spot. Yeah. And so a lot of people um, that are hyper lordotic, they have this what looks to be like an increased curvature in their back, is not healthy lordosis. It's not uh, intersegmental load sharing. So the big lordosis that happens is because of iliacus, a muscle that tilts us forward, and then the big erector spinae that are actually extrinsic or uh, higher up, the, the sausages, if you will, like the DNS people call it, the big thick muscles in the. In the um, thoracic area, try to hypertrophy, right, or create pathological hinging. So I wanted to show that and differentiate the way that we muscle test and show how we down regulate it. Um, so let's face this way and keep your feet together touching. I'm just going to lift this off for everyone to see. And you can see that he has the sausages, uh, a lot of uh, high tone through here, a little bit more tone on the right than the left, yeah? But when we come down lower, a lot of tone down here on the left side compared to the right. So big hypertrophy here and then actually here, uh, a little bit of tightness, tightness. Tightness to us in NKT means uh, a dysfunctional. Yes, dysfunctional, very good. Arms up, good, and then lean back. And so when he leans, you can see that he hinges on one spot, and it's his painful spot in his back, and his erectors mostly do the job, and his pelvis tilts forward. It happens more, you can see the dimple a little bit more on this side than this side, meaning his pelvis tilts a little bit more uh, forward on the left side. Uh, we think that he might have uh, iliacus um, just over aggressively moving the pelvis forward, and then you try to counter that with the rectus spinae, especially on the right side. Okay, so just lay you flat on your back. So I won't go through AKT protocol because I think it's actually more appropriate that um, uh, you guys take a seminar to do that. But I would like to show the differentiation between looking at how multifidus moves and how erector spinae move. Actually, can I flip you over on your belly? Yes, I'll show that first. So if we look at a prone ASLR test, can you put your hands on your forehead for me? Yeah. yeah. So basically put them in the crocodile operating position. And I look just to see how he sits on the table, if he tilts to one side. Looks like he doesn't excessively tilt. I would expect it to have more, um, uh, be able to put my hand under a little bit further on one side. And I can put it further just a tiny, tiny bit more on the left side, indicating he has an anterior anomaly or his pelvis is tilted a little bit more on this side. This makes him a little bit more hyperlordotic on the left side which can encourage his decreased tone here in the left multifidus. The multifidus is an intersegmental extensor, so it really encourages healthy lordosis, whereas the erector spinae and iliacus create hyperlordosis, which is not good back functioning. We can actually see that exacerbate here in the test. If you can move a little closer, you might be able to see it. So I want you just to relax your head on your, your hands, and I want you to do a prone active straight leg raise. So you're gonna raise this leg up, and you can see the increased tone that happens through here. Right? And then can you do this one here? He has a hard time lifting this leg, yes? And so you can see your body actually tries to rotate to this side when you do that, okay? That can indicate that your, your muscles are actually rotating in the wrong direction. Multifidus on this side should be working along with the biceps femoris on this side to be able to counter rotate you. You should be able to use your multifidus on this side to move you over to this side. But it doesn't look like that's happening. We'll watch it again. He has a hard time doing that and it, the entire thing kind of rotates. Okay. He might also have sacral involvement because multifidus and lumbar erector is actually attached to sacrum. If I push on his sacrum a little bit and have him do it, he gets a little bit better, yeah, right? Yeah. So that indicates that if I just put you into a little bit of nutation, you improve, right? That's telling us that the exacerbator is probably going to be in your ilium, something that attaches to your ilium, but also that you might use your erector spinae too much in compensation up here for the multifidus and lumbar erectors down low. Okay, so let's flip you back over. So if his left multifidus looked dysfunctional, I actually want to test 
with the right leg um, for the lumbar erectors as well as multifidus. But I have to change this test a little bit. The amazing David Weinstock and the amazing Thomas Wells, our NKT masters, actually show how to differentiate these two muscle tests. So if I were to actually pull this leg up off the table just a little bit, and I would be testing lumbar erectors. They're ipsilateral rotators that iliocostalis pulls his spine towards the side that uh, we're gonna be testing. So, or sorry, towards the side opposite that we're gonna be testing. So it will be rotating to the left as I test his right leg. Take a deep breath in, all the way out, and then don't let me pull. He doesn't have a lot of connectivity there with the lumbar erectors. We already knew that was gonna happen because he uses thoracic erectors. The higher I pull your leg, Melvin, you're gonna feel a little stronger. Deep breath in all the way out, don't let me push. The higher I pull his leg, the stronger his test gets because he's actually efficient at using the thoracic erectors. The problem with that, Melvin, is that that gives you hyperlordosis and that might create some low back pain, yeah? Um, if I wanted to test multifidus, I can actually roll up a towel. I'm gonna use my shoe, is that okay with you? That's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna tilt that underneath his pelvis and this is gonna encourage rotation to the leg that I'm testing. That's counter or, or contralateral rotation. So that's left multifidus on this side. Take a deep breath in, all the way out, and don't let me pull. He doesn't have a whole lot of connectivity to that. Um, so mine is doing the NKT protocol, which I think you should take uh, the seminar for. Um, I already know who his compensator is because we did the testing. His compensator is more in his ilium. He has a lot of chief complaint in your ilium, yes? Yeah. And so the tightness, I can tell you, is that tightness is an indication of dysfunction. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't like to be touched there. So I would normally uh, do uh, the iliacus protocol uh, that we did today in class. Yeah. But I wanted to show you guys what we would do for, um, for someone who actually needs to release their erectors as opposed to uh, their iliacus. Can you stand up for us? So you had thoracic erectors as a compensation pattern and iliacus. So I want to have you do is put your left leg back. And so we're going to open up the iliacus. Can you put it back a little bit farther? Okay. And then for the erectors, I want to make sure that he can actually encourage healthy lordosis. So I'm going to do a pendulum to relax his iliocostalis, his ipsilateral rotators on this left side, right? That'll help his multifidus come alive on the left side because it's counter rotating. So I'm gonna have you just bend over to the left. Good, keep that hip wide open for me, okay? Yeah, and then we're gonna move over to the right. And then I want you to flex right through my thumb. There you go. Excellent. And I'm gonna turn around just so the camera can see from the rear, okay? So, put the left leg back for us. Good. And so I'm on his iliocostalis uh, thoracis meeting um, the, the lumborum portions right here, about rib seven six area. Which is more like around rib eight for you. Which is more like iliocostalis. Okay. The longissimus thoracis right there. It's where the, the lumborum and thoracis are kind of meeting their upper counterparts. And what this will do is it'll kind of shut down iliacus a little bit and shut down the thoracic erectors so we can use lumbar erectors and multifidus with a little bit more efficiency. Keep that hip nice and open in extension. There you go. And so now we lay you back down, face up for me. And without doing the protocol, I just wanna show you how uh, we're able to, he's gonna be able to resist me now. And so I'm gonna test your left lower lumbar erectors, right? And so deep breath in, all the way out, don't let me push. And he's able to resist me without pain, yes? Mm -hmm. But when I test the left multifidus, I have to counter rotate or contralaterally rotate. They do that counter rotation for iliocostalis. And I'm gonna keep his leg closer to the table. Deep breath in, all the way out, don't let me push. And he's able to resist me very nicely. So the difference between erectors and multifidus is they do opposite side rotations, right? Iliocostalis is the only part of the erectors that rotates, and they do ipsilateral rotation, so the eyes go together. Um, multifidus uh, does intersegmental counter rotation, so it actually does contralateral rotation. So the way you can separate them is with a shoe, or with a towel, yep. <laughs> or with a block. Um, the, um, the great thing to look at after that is the pronase LR. So let's put you back on your belly. And hands on the forehead. I'm going to do the exact same test we did before. We can see this tone's already gone down. Do you feel different through yeah. here? Yeah, it feels and I can't stick my hand as much mm -hmm. underneath his left ilium. So he, he really does like that more open position. And then this is the one that you had trouble with because that's using these erectors and multifidus. So can you raise this leg for me? Yeah, and you can see that he raises a lot higher now. 
Very good. Thank you so much. Feel better? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Let's look at your standing hinge, just an extra challenge, if you will. Okay, I'll hold this up for you. Feet together, touching. Arms up, and then you can see that you, he more easily moves the sacrum forward, and it's not perfect. We have work to do, but man, that's better. Yeah. Then you can see that some of your pain is created by iliacus and iliocostalis, yes? Um, so we can down-regulate those and up-regulate things like um, multifidus and lumbar erectors. A great way to progress you from this would be the Modified Superman. So you guys are interested in, in learning Modified Superman, you can go on the YouTube and look up that one. And that's a little bit more advanced, so I'm going to start you here uh, with some, a little bit of practice on that pendulum, a little bit of practice opening up your, your left hip, and then a little bit of practice on prone SLR. So you can actually practice that on your own and then turn it into uh, even more advanced Modified Superman. Thank you so That's much. Awesome. I really I appreciate it. I'm the amazing Melvin, <laughs> and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you found it useful. Duly noted.